Alrighty, step three, reflect. Um, as I ended the last video, I mentioned that as a student was assessing some number of their peers, let's say three, um, then that same number of, of peers was also assessing their work. By the way, I should mention that you know, we've got algorithms underneath that, that control the whole uh, assignment of um, work to different peers and different students um, and a number of ways you can tweak those algorithms. So uh, there's, there's some power under the hood that I won't talk about too much because for now we just want to kind of show you how this looks to students. So, so let's go right to this third phase. A student would log in and again the first thing they would see are the instructions. Now of course the, the challenge given to students, they've kind of moved away from the teacher role and back to the student role. And their challenge here is to learn from the feedback and to use what they learn to make their work better. So we kind of walk them through a number of steps and they're all kind of described in the instructions, but I'll just, I'll just show it to you directly. Um, what peers, what students see is in this case, three peers, the reaction of three peers. So let me just orient you first this is the student's work. <clears throat> this is what they submitted. And so what's going to change is going to be the feedback on that work. So here we're seeing the feedback from peer one. That includes their, their written feedback and their evaluation scores, but it also includes their uh, inline comments, anything they attach directly to the document. So you'll see, for example, when I go to P2, peer two, this has changed, but so has this. I mean, I mean the content hasn't changed. But for example, what we'll see right away is peer two is not leaving any inline comments. So, you know, first blush, they are not nearly as diligent as peer one is in terms of giving feedback. And then we can look at peer three as well. And you see peer three has some inline comments, but they're somewhere in the middle. Okay, so now the student's task is one by one to go through these bits of feedback and ultimately to answer this question at the bottom. How useful is this peer's assessment with respect to helping you improve your future work? Um, and I like to, again, have these things. Remember, don't confuse nice with useful. Nice feedback can be useless for helping you improve. Was this feedback useful in terms of giving you a clear sense of how you can improve your work? We're already trying to orient students towards that notion that sometimes your greatest critic is your best friend. Anybody who's giving you a clear sense of things you could do better um, is in fact helping you no matter what their tone might be. And so we're trying to give students exposure to this in a relatively safe environment here in the, in the context of their uh, activity. So. They would go through peer one, they would look at the things that the peer said um, about their work and the inline comments. Those are also, by the way, summarized here in these comments. Um, they can see the ratings this peer gave them, but really the way I've set up the assessment, it's this constructive comment that's probably gonna carry most of the weight. So in this case, this person says, hmm, this is pretty good already. I would suggest you try rewriting it in the third person to make it more formal as you now use first person a lot. I think that would make it better. So the, the student's job is to now think about that and imagine doing what this peer says. What if I, oh yeah, I do say, I think technology could be used in my opinion, this would so, hmm, what if I said that in third person? Do I feel that would strengthen my work? And you know, if I did, then I would probably be asking, well, how much? Is this just somewhat useful? Which is probably about where I would put this feedback. Um, or is it very useful? Or do I in fact disagree? Do I think that this person is wrong? And if I did this, it would not make my work better, in which case I would call it not useful. So just take a moment here to, to think about what's going on. This is receptive communication at its best. This is somebody in a sense, judging your work, telling you ways it could be better. And the skill we're really trying to develop here is the student's ability to kind of put emotion on the side and listen and think about that work and analyze that feedback uh, and ultimately make that decision. And again, they're not just doing this once, they're doing this again and again for every peer feedback they come into. So let's just do another one really quickly. Uh, we already said peer two didn't leave any inline comments, nothing. 
And their constructive comment was, this was great. Man, I don't know what to suggest. I don't think this could be any better. Again, that feels cool, excellent. This person loves my work, but that should be not useful because they don't tell us any way we can improve. Okay, so students are doing this repeatedly in the structured environment, engaging receptive communication, critical thinking. Um, and then ultimately, after they've done this for all three peers, and they've analyzed the feedback from all three peers, then once they've saved it, this button would light up. And what this button would is is the revision step. Uh, and in a nutshell, it's, hey, you've had three people in this case tell you ways your work could be better. Well, maybe you didn't accept everything they said, but there should have been something they said that's useful. Um, so now what we want you to do is use it. Um, go back to your original composition and make it better. Use that feedback and use everything you learned from this experience and make your work better. And, and this is something called formative feedback. Um, there's a lot of research that suggests if you just give students feedback, you know, uh, they'll read it, but they won't think about it too deeply. However, if you give them feedback and say, now make your work better, and by the way, I'm going to relatively, I'm going to grade your final product heavily. So if you can find ways to make it better, make it better. That'll help your grade. Um, that pushes students to, to really ingest the feedback, to really consider it. Okay. One other thing I'll, I'll say about this whole step is I like that we're putting students in a situation where they're getting what I would call noisy feedback. So some peers give them really good feedback, some don't. If it's a teacher giving you feedback, in a sense, you're being told not to think. You're being told, hey, this teacher has evaluated your work and here's the problems, fix them and it's just kind of like you're supposed to fix them. But when it's peers, and when you're told ahead of time, some of these peers are, are gonna be bang on, some are not, then we're inviting you to think. We're inviting you to evaluate each piece, and in fact, we're guiding you explicitly through that process. Uh, and that ultimately gives you permission, as it were, to use feedback or not as you think wise. So it, it's really a situation where we're inviting critical thought um, and, and doing so in the context of the student's own work. So they're thinking heavily about their own work here and that's developing what we call their metacognitive awareness, their, their ability to know their own strengths and weaknesses. Okay, and that's what the third phase is really about. All right, that is the Peer Scholar process. Um, just, you know, in, in a very quick nutshell, create phase. Here an instructor can, can um, get students to exercise any skills they want by the way they design uh, their assignment. So it's really based on the assignment the instructors give. But regardless of that assignment, in the next two steps, they are going to be engaging a lot of critical thought, receptive communication, expressive communication, Creative thought too, I haven't emphasized that so much, but when you're suggesting to a peer how they can make their work better, or when you're considering your revision and how to make your own work better, you're invoking creative thought there as well. So in these phases, all of those core cognitive skills are getting a nice structured exercise. And it's that kind of context that we know develops them. The other thing I will point out is that most of the action that's happening throughout these activities uh, is a function of, a result of, and directly reflecting student activity. So the instructor, yes, at the end of this whole, the instructor had to create the instructions at the beginning, and at the end of this whole thing, the instructor will probably be doing the grading, or, or a TA will. Um, although even at scale, there's ways to automate the grading, but nonetheless, the critical point here is that throughout this whole process, the instructor doesn't have to do much at all. Students are learning from each other. They are teaching one another. Uh, and this has been proven over and over again to be a very powerful and highly effective context for learning. And that's really what we're harnessing um, in all of this. So there's your tour. I hope you like it. Um, any 
comments, feedback, please let us know. We would love to hear it. All right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.